Hello students, we are back for the study of the immunology part. We are including the organs and the cells in one of the immune system. In like the previous class, we have uh, learned some basics of immunology, uh, like immune response, uh, what is primary immune response, secondary immune response. We will uh, look into this today's topic on the different organs and cells in body the immune system. We all know that we classify in general the lymphoid organs into primary and secondary lymphoid organs. Primary lymphoid organs is the bone marrow uh, which is very important and the thymus gland. The secondary lymphoid organs include the lymph nodes, spleen, uh, uh, MALT, RJLT, gut associated lymphoid tissue, mucus associated lymphoid tissue. Okay. These all help in the uh, lodging of these B cells and T cells. In the primary lymphoid organs, uh, they are formed actually. The bone marrow cells and the thymus dependent cells are formed. And then they are uh, going to be lodged in the secondary lymphoid organs and help in the uh, immune system, immune responses. We will be learning about those things uh, in the further classes. Uh, for today, we will learn the different types of organs and cells. When we talk about cells, we will include the granulocytes and agranulocytes. I will show you the, all the uh, slides in the form of a classification and the description parts. Okay. So, shall we go for the first uh, part of the topic, the organs involved in the immune system. So, I am back here with the pictures. Primary lymphoid organs include bone marrow Okay, for the first one. So, you all know that the bone has uh, the stem cells the lymphoid stem cells which are going to be differentiated into progenitor B cells and then they multiply to become precursor B cells okay and this precursor B cells are going to be further converted to the mature B cells through the cytokines produced by the stroma cells stroma cells are also part of the bone marrow okay so these B cells carry diversified antibodies on the surface which is going to be responsible for the uh, initial uh, uh, humoral immune responses Second one is the thymus gland. The thymus gland is uh, said to be present in the uh, above the heart. It is bilobed in nature, grey and flat in structure. It is actually uh, going to be matured up to puberty. Okay, up to puberty, we have the development of the thymus gland. After that, the thymus gland starts shrinking. In a sense, maybe 14 years, still 14 years, it is going to uh, bring a growth and then uh, functioning. And the functions start uh, degenerating up to 45. That is why immunity is lowered in the later stages. That is why we should develop our immune system better during the up to puberty. Okay. And uh, when you talk about the organ, so what is this actually going to do? So we all know that the B cells are formed in the bone marrow. That's why the name B cells. Okay. So these B cells are going to convert into T cells. That's the main function of the thymus gland. In the sense when B cells come in circulation, they enter the thymus gland and the thymus gland will uh, help in converting a, a few B cells into T cells. In the sense all the B cells will not enter the thymus gland. Whichever enters, whichever comes in uh, contact with these compounds, thymosin and thymopoietin is going to convert into T cells. Okay. What is T cells? Thymus dependent cells. Okay. So B cells are the ones which are going to convert to thymus dependent cells. Okay, that's going to be due to the epithelial cells present in the thymus gland producing thymosin and thymopoietin and thus converting the B cell to T cell. Of course, thymus gland do has dendritic cells, macrophages, okay, and they are going to be protecting the organ uh, from any infection, right. That's the role of a thymus gland. Coming to the study of the secondary lymphoid organs. Secondary lymphoid organs include, as I told you, one of them is the lymph nodes. Okay. We all know that the, we have lymphatic vessels other than the blood vessels. The lymphatic vessels have lymph nodes. Okay. So, I have just uh, picturized one here. In the armpits, you have lymph nodes. Okay. More of lymph nodes. And in the groin region also, after the abdominal uh, groin region also, you will find the lymph nodes in more number. So, what is the uh, reason that uh, lymph nodes are going to be protective for us? Or because the lymph node, if I take a section, you can understand, it's having an outer cortex, inner medulla, and there's a, a, a layer called as pericortex, okay? So, what do you see here? The zones have some amount of lodged in B cells and uh, macrophages. If you see here in the cortex, you have in the B cells, the B lymphocytes, and the dendritic cells. Please remember, dendritic cells can also act as 
antigen presenting cells macrophages can also act as antigen presenting cells the paracortex will have the t cells present in them okay this b cells whatever you find here might be even a uh, memory b cell okay so memory b cells can also lodge in the lymph node and used up when there's a secondary immune response so you have the afferent and uh, efferent lymphatic vessels which are going to uh, circulate the blood and uh, oxygenate and uh, deoxygenate the organ i mean in the sense the lymph nodes okay so i think you got the concept here so sometimes we do have infections in the lymph nodes that's called lymphadenopathy the swelling of the lymph nodes because it's also an organ which we uh, generally like you know it can also get infected so you all uh, got it here we have some immune cells present inside the organ so they'll be present as a uh, reservoir that's why it's called secondary lymphoid organ fine okay so coming to the uh, next organ that is the spleen the second largest uh, uh, secondary lymphoid organ when you consider it's having the red pulp and the white pulp the outer red pulp and the inner white pulp and you have a marginal zone here also wherein uh, it has got a high density of lymphocytes and the macrophages in the marginal zone red pulp also has got the b and the t cells b lymphocytes t lymphocytes macrophages okay and there's also a peri arterial uh, lymphoid sheath which has uh, b cells and the germinal center which generates more number of b cells here thus uh, spleen cells uh, spleen is an organ which is having the uh, different types of immune cells memory cells also can be present here and hence it can help in secondary immune response tonsils is another important organ which is very important where uh, you have three types of uh, nodular uh, immune organs present one is pharyngeal and the is palatine this is present in the nasopharyngeal region in the roof of the nasopharyngeal region and this back of the mouth you can find the palatine and below the tongue you can find the linguinal so all these nodes uh, when you talk about nodules if you take a section of it it has got uh, um, lymphocytes and macrophages present and mast cells present and hence it is also said to be one of the important uh, secondary lymphoid organs okay which will lodge the immune cells in them malt that is a mucus associated lymphoid tissue i have taken one of them as an example of the gut associated lymphoid tissue the section of the intestine where you have the <coughs> villi lamina propria with the plasma b cells t helper cells and macrophages germinal center with b cells and of course these are the various layers in the intestine so coming back here mucosa sub mucosa so mucosa will have the uh, b cells and t cells and all and sub mucosa will have the germinal center the inner one is the muscularis interna which is having the circular muscles and longitudinal muscles and the fine uh, the inner one is the uh, serosa okay so since the, <coughs> this is a columnar epithelial cells so we can find the uh, gut associated lymphoid tissue which is going to lodge these plasma b cells and all whenever there is an infection in the intestine we can expect these uh, to play a important role coming to the <clears throat> second part of the study the cells of the immune system we classify means in the sense stem cells are the basic cells which give rise to lymphocytes and the uh, myeloid progenitor cells okay so when you when you talk about the lymphocytes uh, i'll come back to this later let us first look into this the granulocytes are uh, different types like neutrophils eosinophils basophils and mast cells these all are having uh, granules the further called granulate granulocytes and these are a granulocytes when you consider monocytes which give rise to dendritic cells and macrophages i'll be discussing this in each in the further slides this side you can see the lymphocytes which are having uh, which are uh, 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 classified into b cells t cells and nk cells natural killer cells the t cell progenitor cells will be uh, uh, giving rise to the t helper cells and the cytotoxic t cells okay and the b cell progenitors will be forming the plasma b cell and the memory b cells we will be looking into all these aspects as we go in the further studies this is only a general uh, table which to uh, which helps us in classifying granulocytes and a granulocytes to repeat or to brief out these all are granulocytes this come under the a granulocytes talking about granulocytes we have one of them is a the neutrophils okay the neutrophils will be uh, actually they, uh, this cannot divide this around 60 to 70% in the uh, blood system okay they are more uh, important for bacterial infections 
what you observe here is the cell is around 10 to 20 micrometers whereas the yeast nuffel is 10 to 12 micrometers in size see the difference here this is having three to five lobes uh, and here it is only two lobes okay and uh, red violet granules are found here and uh, orange red granules are found in the yeast nuffels i try to compare and make you understand easier here is a ph is neutral and here the ph is acidic therefore the straining uh, property is different i think in the labs you have done the straining of this wherein you have the Riesmann straining being done okay so uh, you can find the granules these granules are classified into primary granules and secondary granules primary granules will have hydrolysis and lysozyme secondary granules will have lysozyme and lactoferrin uh, they help uh, majorly in phagocytosis we'll be discussing this in the uh, further uh, slides about the different uh, cell mediated immunity and all there you come across phagocytosis but please learn the terminology and in blood tissue spaces you can find it they release antimicrobial compounds and thus they prevent a lot of uh, infections they live only for a few days and they cannot divide when you compare yeast no fills they are only two to four percent they increase uh, when there's an allergy okay and these orange red granules will have enzymes with peroxidase and uh, antihistamines they neutralize uh, heparin also they help in phagocytosis they are found more during the parasitic infection and allergy. They help in degranulation and detoxification. Okay, please remember the difference, size and as well the nucleus. Here there's three to five lobes, three, four or five. And this is only two lobes and that too they are having a thin strand between the two lobes. And the color difference also helps us in understanding the difference between neutrophils and eosinophils. Coming to the next one, the basophils. The basophils are non-phagocytic, uh, non 0.5 to 1% in uh, um, percentage in the blood. It's found in the connective tissue and also in the circulation. Whereas the, whereas the mast cells very much behave similar to basophils, they are also having granules, but they are found fixed only in the connective tissue. So if you come back to the structure here, both are similar, mast cells and basophils. So here you can find the kidney-shaped uh, nucleus, very specific. Violet granules will be there, which is basic uh, pH. The, uh, the one of the key characteristics, what how to identify them very easily is there's lot of uh, gran, I mean uh, granules which covers the nucleus itself. It's only eight to ten micrometers uh, in size. Uh, when you compare the others, you can make out neutrophils and uh, eosinophils have a difference with basophils. So there's no confusion in the identification in the slide. Okay, and the, these granules will uh, contain histamines, uh, vasodilators, heparin, uh, which acts as anticoagulant. They mainly help in inflammation during inflammations and allergy reactions. Okay, and uh, uh, they carry IgE, immunoglobulin E. They bind to the antigen and shows degranulation. This is a picturization here, which uh, where the basophils or the muscles carry the um, antibody on them, bind to the antigen and then they produce histamines and there's a degranulation de and that's how you find allergy reactions antihistamines have to be given uh, when histamines are produced allergy is seen okay uh, when antihistamines are uh, given we are going to subside the role of histamine which is we are going to subside allergy it means okay so to just brief out here basophils are violet granules eosinophils are said to be orange red granules uh, okay i have a difference in the they might be looking similar in the size when you compare but by the color, one can identify the cells and the, the uh, neutrophils are quite larger in size also. That's one more thing we should remember. Okay. So, these are the three types of uh, granulocytes what we come across along with mast cells when you consider. When you talk about agranulocytes, we have the uh, monocytes, one of them, which is uh, having a, a, a nucleus which is uh, almost uh, like a kidney shape. And here you see the comparison. There's no granules in these. Okay. Uh, monocytes and lymphocytes okay monocytes also uh, give rise to macrophages and uh, dendritic cells dendritic cells are below the skin and in so in the organs as we saw in the previous uh, uh, slides and all dendritic cells and macrophages both of them can act as uh, antigen presenting cells okay monocyte circulates in the blood survives for a day okay later it enters the tissue and matures into a uh, macrophage okay uh, here you can find this the first line of defense uh, usually monocytes are first line of defense they help in phagocytosis and also act as antigen presenting cells they produce degradative enzymes like lysozymes and hydrolytic enzymes so they present uh, in the form of a lysosome 
the lymphocytes uh, are a, a second category of acranidocytes which is having a large nucleus almost covering the cell okay uh, it's uh, made it's again classified into b cells and t cells i already told you that usually b cells are the ones which are going to be produced in the bone marrow they enter the thymus gland and then they convert into thymus dependent cells thymus dependent cells are of, again classified into t helper cells T suppressor cells. We'll be discussing about these in further uh, slides when I'm teaching you about the cell mediated immunity and be discussing those parts also there. So here you can remember lymphocytes are said to be non-phagocytic uh, type of uh, cells. They don't show phagocytosis. They help in humoral immune response and cell mediated immune response. So to, to tell you in brief uh, about these aspects, we need to understand that um, the monocytes Macrophages, dendritic cells, lymphocytes, these all are agranulocytes basically. They don't have granules. Again, when you classify, lymphocytes don't behave like uh, uh, phagocytic, but they will help an immune system in humoral and cell mediated immunity. Okay, they uh, carry the B cells, carry the antibodies on them, whereas T helper cells only induce memory B cells. And that is the later on part we will be studying it. Okay, and um, these will act as antigen present. To end up here, you uh, should remember antigen presenting cells are those which can process the antigen. I'll repeat once again antigen presenting cells are those cells which are going to process the antigen and they include a macrophage, they can include a dendritic cell and also a B cell. Okay, B cell. So again, I'll repeat B cell, macrophage, dendritic cell. All these can behave as antigen presenting cells. Okay, these can be showing phagocytosis, whereas this cannot show phagocytosis. I have one uh, specific uh, slide which will uh, show you a picture of the whole thing. You can see the erythrocytes, you can see the monocyte, the lymphocyte. Neutrophil, basophil, eosinophil. What do you see in all these? They are all granulated. Okay, These all are having granules. And uh, as I told you, 3 to 5 uh, lobes here. Isn't it? Okay, And here I told you, basophils are almost, the nucleus is completely covered by granules. You can see that here. And this is a, a thin strand cover, I mean, connecting the two lobes. Okay, And this is more like, a, uh, what do you say, a, uh, almost covered, but it is said to be concave shaped here. This, this is almost covering it, but uh, see the difference in the shape here. A, a lymphocyte can be a B cell or a T cell. I think this slide will help you in understanding uh, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Right? So, uh, I think you got the basics of this, uh, of what are organs and uh, cells involved in the immune system. In the coming uh, slide, I, uh, coming uh, video lectures, I will be teaching you about the uh, concepts of... Uh, what is uh, humoral immune response and cell mediated immune response with this basic background please all of you go back and read this once again i have briefed it out i have taught you also in the theory class uh, about this so i just wanted to brush through the process so i have just gone through the uh, main organs and cells in our immune system in the coming video lecture we will be discussing about the concepts of what is humoral immune response and what is cell mediated immune response that is what we will be dealing in the coming slides. These are all our basics, whatever you learn now.